Has the organisation I'm applying for got a good relationship with its staff? What's the feedback from its customers like? Can you trust them? Now, you'll know about this, and we'll come on to this in other videos, where you get a gut instinct for this. And many people have said, yeah, I've heard what you're saying, I know what you do, and I know how you do it, but something's not right here. And if, the, if, if it's not right and you don't trust them, then obviously that's, you know, that's high up on your, on your value system. That shouldn't be something that you should be working with that organisation for. Financial security is really important to me. Now, there's different areas to this. This is the third most important thing to me. I, I place integrity over financial security. I will walk off a contract if I think we're doing it for the wrong reasons, and I've done so many times, as my good colleague John Stebbin will vouch for. We will refuse to take the dollar, we will refuse to take the man's money if we don't think that they satisfy these two ones here. So financial security is important to me, but it's not the driving factor in all of this. Now, in relation to this, I can start to see where I need to go as an individual and what route I need to follow. For those of you starting a business, for those of you going out to the wide world, your driver might initially be to make money, but then you are, need to ask yourself the question, what am I making money for? What is making money going to allow me to do? And then you may find that actually it's not about making money, it's about other values that you hold, like trust, integrity, or whatever your values are. The next one I put down here is privacy. Now I'm actually quite a, quite a private person. And I like to, to spend time on my own, I like to read, I like to reflect, and I work well on my own. I don't necessarily work well in an office full of other people. I've tried that, didn't happen. Now in my younger days, when I was in, in the armed forces in the Royal Navy, I lived on a mess deck of a warship with 120 other guys. Not a lot of room for privacy, but my values were different then. You know, I wasn't worried about financial security because I thought, well, the Navy's going to pay me out a pension at the end of the day. Uh, integrity and trust were very important to me, and if you're living with 100 odd blokes in a mess deck, then that's really important too, to make sure they don't steal your stuff. So these things will change over time. Relationships was the next important one, and that's really important to me too. I got a phone call the other day, someone rang me up and said, look, we'd like to have a license to deliver your train the trainers course. And I asked them who they were. And they said, well, does it matter who we are? We're willing to pay the money and pay you quite a lot of money to get your material to deliver a train the trainers course. And my answer to that was, that's not how we work. I work with people I trust. I work with people who've been with me for a few years, so we have a relationship. And I work with people who share my values, who have you know, personal and professional integrity in the marketplace. And I'm not going to give you a license purely on the basis that you're going to pay me a lot of money because I don't know who you are, I don't know what your values are, I don't know what you're going to use it for. You may be good, you may be bad, you may be indifferent, and I'm ever so sorry. And the gentleman basically asked me to name my price, and I said, I'm ever so sorry, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to give you a license to, to use my material because that's not the major number one on my, on my chain here. Respect is really important. Now, respect is important to me, and I think when we're training, we, we should all have respect for one another, but it's not as important as integrity. And what I mean by that is I'm, I'm not going to go out and be disrespectful to someone just for the sake of, of, of making someone else laugh or belittling someone, but if I, if I think that I've got to deal with a, a government department, for example, uh, and they're, they're, they're not being very integral in their approach, and I think they're not right, then I will write and tell them so. And if we have to get into a confrontation with that one, um, and they think I don't respect them, then that's fine, because that's further down than integrity to me, So if, if that makes sense to you. Then we've got courtesy. I absolutely believe in, believe in good manners. It's really, really important to me. It's a very important skill, and, 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 it, and it should be at the forefront of all of your minds when you're dealing with people. But once again, I'm quite happy to be discourteous, for the sake of integrity and for the sake of trust for the right people. And the key thing with this, and one of the real values that we have as an organisation, is doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. That's really, really important in life. You, know, you do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And just for example, if you're a trainer, how many trainers out there or how many training companies out there are delivering training courses that they don't believe in? They're delivering training courses to earn money, teaching stuff they don't believe in. Now, we know that because they contact us all the time and say, look, hate it hate what we're doing, don't enjoy what we're doing, but that's the system. If the system doesn't work, the system has to be challenged, and that's why these values are important to us, and we would rather challenge the system and make a point and try and change the system as opposed to taking the money. And good customer service, as I've said, is there. So when we're looking to develop products, when we're looking to work with people, when we're looking to partnership with organisations, these are really, really important to us. Now, you need to find what your own ones are. 
And that's what that list is for that I've given you on the document below this video. So you can download this and you can start working through it. And eventually you'll come up with a hierarchy of values. So integrity, number one for us. Trust, number two. Financial security, number three. Four is privacy. Five is relationships. Six is respect. Seven is courtesy. And eight, a good customer service. That's our hierarchy of values in terms of, of some of the things that we, that, that we actually look for, that we, we possess. And then we look and say, right, if I was applying for a job, what job is going to give me this? Now, here's the thing for you. How many people go into interviews trying to sell themselves to the organization, believing that they understand what the organization is all about? Well, a key fact of life is this. If you share the same values as the organization that you're applying for a job with, for example, they are more likely to actually look to employing you. And one of the things you can use this for, and this is where you young people out there or those of you out there who, who are looking to apply for jobs can use this to your advantage. If you do this exercise, you can walk into an interview with your head held high and say, listen, these are my values. This is what I hold to be true to me. These are really important to me. And I believe that working for you or working with you will satisfy these values because. Isn't that a better way to enter an interview process as opposed to someone saying, why do you want the job? Well, they all know why you want the job. You want to earn money. You want to earn money to put eggs in the fridge, to pay your mortgage, to pay your bills, to do everything else. We all know that. That's the bottom line down at the bottom end of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But if you say, yes, I need to do that, but the reason I'm applying for a job with you, the reason I'm applying for a position with you, the reason I want to work with you is I believe you share the same values that I have in the same order, and that's why I want to work with you. I do not just want to be paid a salary. And I will sweat blood and tears for you because we believe the same things. You've only got to look at people like Dr. Martin Luther King and more recently Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, these people, Apple. They have hundreds of thousands of loyal followers, not because they're paid. It's because they share the same values. And you share the same values from a selfish perspective. You're doing it because of you. So you're looking for something that meets your value base. And there, there are all sorts of areas that you can utilize this in. I did this many years ago and it helped to set the criteria for what we do as an organization. It put me on a path where I want to go because the most important thing for you in life is everyone will say to you, do you have a goal? Now, if you need to fake that to get an interview, you say, yeah, I've got a goal. They say, what is it? And you'll say, my goal is X, Y, Z. But if your goal is not congruent with your values, it's not your goal because it can't be a goal if you don't know what your values are. And therefore, how can you decide on having a goal when you don't know what your value, your value hierarchies are? Therefore, this value elicitation exercise is really, really important. And like I said, don't spend a short amount of time doing it. Spend time doing it. Sit down. I flowchart this stuff. I mind map this stuff. I've got these all over the place. And then I go through precisely say, is that one more important than this one? And I move them up and down in order. But the process for doing this is all on the document below. You can do this over Christmas, you can do this over New Year, and then you can move into the new year with a clear path, a clear concept of where you want to go as an individual, or where you want to be. And share the science, guys, okay? Give this to kids in school. Give this to children leaving university. Give this to people who are at home now, worried about their job in the new year. Because remember, when I asked them the question, if you had 12 months to live, would you be doing this now? Everyone said no. Life is too short to be doing what you don't enjoy just to earn the money to continue doing what you don't enjoy. It doesn't make sense. You are a massively powerful individual. You've got more cells in your body than there are stars and planets in all the known universe. You've got more neurons in your brain than there are stars and planets in all of the known universes out there. You, you are an image made in, in God's image, therefore you have the ability to create. Don't go through life selling yourself for less than what you're worth. As we move into next year, I'm going to teach you more about this. And we're going to show you how you can utilize what you have to put you on the path to excellence, to put you on the path to be more than what you, what you consider or even think you are. And you won't know how, how powerful you are until you do this. And we're going to do this so you can find an abundance in everything you do. We're going to teach you how to market using this concept because if you are congruent in your marketing, if you're congruent in your business approach, if you are genuinely sincere in why you do stuff, people will come to you. They won't come to you just because you're a training company. They won't come to you just because you offer a qualification. If they're desperate, they might have to. 
But most people will train with you because they like to train with people who are similar to them. Like attracts like. But how are you going to know who to attract if you don't know what your value base is or your hierarchy is? So there you are. That's my Christmas present to you. Please do the exercise and, and give us some feedback. Let us know how you get on. It's a basic NLP exercise, by the way. Lots of people do this. And we'll be running courses next year and webinars next year to take you through this and further if you like. But please share the science. Share it with people. I mean, there's probably a like button or a Facebook or Twitter share button. Share it with, with, with your, your friends on Facebook and Twitter because I'm on a bit of a mission next year. I want to get people out of apathy. I want children to become empowered. I want to teach children how to run their own businesses so they're not dependent on the man, they're not dependent on the buck, they're not dependent on, on getting on the treadmill and losing their dreams and just going through life doing what they shouldn't be doing to earn money so they can continue doing what they shouldn't be doing to earn more money and then teach their children to do the same. You're better than that. Have a good Christmas and I hope the new year brings you everything that you wish for and work on. Thanks very much.